It has been a big week for abortion rights in Idaho, at least legally. The day after the Justice Department filed the lawsuit to stop the enforcement of Idaho's near total trigger law, well, that same law and another abortion ban passed this year got their day in Idaho's Supreme Court. Not to say they won't get another day in court, but that depends on what these five justices decide. Planned Parenthood filed three lawsuits against the state of Idaho for the three abortion laws passed over the last three years. Today's hearing was about them asking the high court to put a stay on Idaho's trigger law and continue the stay of Idaho's fetal heartbeat ban, the one that contains the civil enforcement component. Both are expected to go into effect within the next few weeks. That is, unless a court decides they don't, based on the legality of those laws, which is another aspect of what Planned Parenthood hoped would be part of the Supreme Court's decision. So this seems like a good time to bring in political reporter, chief political reporter, Joe Paris. Let's set the table here, Joe. First, yes. the laws we're talking about today would be the trigger law from 2020, mm -hmm. which was meant to go into effect 30 days after the overturning of Roe v. Wade, which happened last month. Right. The other law we're talking about, known as Senate Bill 1309, passed this past session. It bans abortions after a heartbeat is detected, usually around six weeks of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. But it also carries that civil enforcement mechanism, which means family members can sue a provider, anybody who provides an abortion, for up to $20,000. Mm -hmm. So there's a chance the third law could get included in this, but that's another thing this court is supposed to decide based on what they had today. So here's what we're going to ask. Okay. Stay or no stay on these laws, or do these lawsuits get heard by a lower court? And when do we expect a decision? Those are all great questions. And kind of if you've been following the 208 the last few weeks, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of answers we don't have the answer to right now. But I'll tell you this, it is a good question. The answer is to when are we gonna find out what the Supreme Court rules is, we don't know. The Supreme Court is on their own timeline, so they'll make their decision when they're ready. A good guess though is an order from the court before August 19th, and that's when one of Idaho's abortion laws are set to go into effect. So what was actually discussed in the Idaho Supreme Court today? In short, Planned Parenthood laid out a collection of constitutional and legal issues that they see with the two abortion laws in question. The state, represented by the Attorney General's office, along with private counsel who represented the Idaho legislature, they pushed back on those notions, saying that the laws are legal and they should not be paused. Democrat legislative leaders, Representative Alana Rubel and Senator Melissa Wintrow, they were actually sitting front row today in the Idaho Supreme Court. And I spoke with the pair this afternoon. First, Senator Wintrow described to me the emotion she felt while watching from the front row. As I sat there, I'm thinking of women, hundreds of stories that I have, you know, listened to, experienced, especially victims of violence and incest, uh, and that everything is right on the stake today. Uh, my stomach was turning. I was so anxious thinking about the rights that I've had my entire lifetime, a fundamental right. It, it hangs in the balance of an argument right in front of me. And the unprecedented nature of that, of living with a right your entire life and have it ripped from you, especially thinking about having control over your own body, your own autonomy, your own choices, your own privacy, and that the hard hand of government is gonna reach into my life and make a decision for me that personal. I, 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 would, I mean, words can't describe, I think, the feelings that I was having inside. A major point from the Planned Parenthood side of the courtroom revolves around the laws being vague, specifically a part of the Idaho law that deals with emergency medical exceptions in the case of saving the life of the mother. It's a major debate. Does the law give enough guidance to Idaho doctors on when they can and cannot perform an abortion? Minority leader Rubel tells me, no, she doesn't think it does. She says these laws are ridiculous. These laws don't read like laws that were intended to actually go into effect. They are ridiculous. Having laws that have no exception for the health of the mother and that criminalize doctors in these very gray area situations, um, these were not designed to me with an intent that they actually take effect. These were laws to me that were designed with an intent to get the endorsement of right to life groups and to get donations in a primary with the idea that the U.S. Supreme Court would prevent them from ever going into effect. Now they are the dog that caught the car. Um, they were now looking at a scenario where these laws will actually go on the books and they are outrageous and the notion of these actually being laws that people have to follow is unimaginable. Over on the other side of the courtroom, the Attorney General's office asked the court to abandon a position of pausing any of the abortion laws, saying that they believe they are clear and legal. 
Now, the state argued that on the issue of vagueness, physicians can operate under the scope of good faith medical judgment, which in their opinion sets the standard for physicians to provide abortions under Idaho law. And they say this is not vague, like Planned Parenthood is arguing. Now, Idaho's trigger law passed in 2020. House Caucus Chair Megan Blanks sponsored the legislation on the House floor. And I spoke with her earlier today because she believes the laws are clearly written. We also talked about frustrations and confusion about the exceptions in the bill that do allow abortions. I believe the legislation is very clear. And one of my pet peeves about what's been going on is that um, the left has really been using a lot of talking points that are completely inaccurate when it comes to the bill. There is an exception for the life of the mother. Now, whether they like how that's written or not, it still exists in the bill. There is an exception for rape. They might not like how it's written, but it's in the bill. There's an exception for incest. They might not like how it's written, but it's in the bill. And to promote the fact that this is some sort of blanket, um, doesn't have any exemptions for any one type of bill, is completely and absolutely false. And quickly, let's get back to the question of vagueness in Idaho's trigger law when it comes to the judgment of an Idaho doctor. Representative Blanksman says that she thinks the law is very clear and there's understandable decision-making room for doctors under the law. It, it talks about the judgment of the doctor. Now, it, it, I think that's what we all do when we rely on medical care. And, and this was a big discussion that we had during COVID too, right? Is, is we're relying on the judgment of your medical care provider. And so we, it's in the legislation. And I think that oftentimes when we write legislation where we try to anticipate every single possible reaction, that's when we get into trouble. And that you need, a, what you're doing is trying to set a guideline when you're writing legislation and, and do the best job that you can as far as policy. And then there, there has to be some room for personal judgment, particularly when it comes to medical situations. So we heard from both sides today. Where do we stand right now? Well, the Supreme Court of Idaho will study the issue and eventually they will put out an order ruling on the questions at hand. They can pause the pending abortion laws and continue their own legal review, or they can rule that there's no reason to prevent the laws from going into effect. There's also a third scenario where the legal question could be passed down to a district court. Brian, long story short here is we're going to be watching what the Supreme Court does. They could rule tonight. They could rule tomorrow. They could rule next week. We're going to have to watch. And I think the vagueness pointed out by Justice Boyd uh, during this, these hearings this morning saying that the language in the trigger law doesn't say whether it supersedes the fetal heartbeat law. I mean, there's a lot of confusion still out there that may have to be decided in a court. We'll see, Joe. Thank you very much.